don't don't try to fit yourself into a mold um, uh, e either in uh, how you do the work or what your work looks like. Hey everybody, I'm here with Tom DeForest, friend and co-worker. How you, how you doing, man? Hey, do you know? It's so good to be here. Yeah, thanks for being on this um, being on this interview with me. I wanted to interview you because I know you started with Print On Demand. You're kind of in the year one, year two phase, and I wanted to um, interview to kind of get more, be more relatable to people on my in my audience who maybe are just starting out or maybe are only a year in, sure. um, and get some get some good feedback from you how it is uh, during this time. Yeah. Uh, of, of print on demand does that sound cool yeah great um i got 10 questions for you uh, i think we'll we'll learn a lot about you and what you're doing and kind of your struggles and and likes and dislikes of, of print on demand so i think it'll, it'll be really helpful for people kind of in the same situation awesome. so um the first question is kind of getting to know you so it's pretty easy um I, and i think this will really help people get to know where you are and the question is uh, share with us your print on demand journey so far. Yes. Well, like you said, I'm pretty much uh, for real just one year into it. Okay. Uh, I did start with Redbubble and Cafe Press and, and some others like long, uh, five or 10 years ago. I can't even remember, but uh, really didn't make a, uh, a serious effort uh, until this year. So, um, like you said, we work together and, and we have a great job. Um, uh, but I just wanted more creativity <clears throat> and I love doing t-shirts. I, I don't know why, but for years and years, I've always enjoyed doing t-shirts. I, I even used to work for an athletic wear manufacturer oh, wow. and one summer I probably designed a hundred t-shirts. Really? The, for That's the, cool. Yeah. For the sport camps that they were, they were running um and that was just great fun to me uh so i wanted to get a, you know some more creative outlets i thought you know i'm gonna go back to t-shirts it's just something i love um i love ux but i also just love doing t-shirts uh and really went for it and and in january of this year i set a goal to do a t-shirt uploaded t-shirt every day nice and uh and I didn't, I think I got 19 shirts, you know, out of the possible, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I loved it. It was, and I, I just saw, I saw that I could do it and I was like, Hey, this is, this is doable. This is fun. So that's, that's how I jumped in, uh, really this year. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm realistically less than a year at this point. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. I like that. Um, I like that you're, you're sharing with us like i think it's the love of doing the t-shirts it's kind of like your motivation right because you yeah. you just you just love it it's not about it's come up more of a creative outlet than anything that's right yeah absolutely yeah. that's really cool and i think a lot of people that are watching this uh watch me and follow me a lot of people are doing that just just as a creative outlet and you know uh love it because it's it's creative and it's fun to do and it's probably kind of therapeutic almost so yeah. and at least it is for me too so. <clears throat> i was inspired so you and i used to work more closely mm -hmm. together. we did and um and i think that's when i got on redbubble uh -huh. um and i made a little bit of effort then but but not a whole lot my family was a little bit younger still had kids at home and uh, still do but still was very busy and and just didn't didn't dig in that much um but that but seeing your success uh with it um was you know was what kind of was this was the early starting part was sort of the early inspiration of like mm -hmm. oh, this this you can do this it's mm -hmm. and i knew i had the skills um mm -hmm. but yeah it wasn't until this year that i really began to put in a, a concentrated effort cool cool man so that, that's great that's a great segue for my second question thanks for sharing that answer to the first question the second question kind of builds on the first one and is what are some things you've learned in this past year now that you're kind of pushing a little harder what are what are some things that you've learned about print on demand or 
or anything yeah. that you're doing. Yeah. So, um, I, I think I'm still learning a lot to mm -hmm. be honest. I, I, um, I think one of the things is consistency. Like I was saying, um, that real, that push I made in January, um, really got me off square one and just taught me um some things that i that i that about getting it done i guess just about jumping in and doing it so one thing i've done this year that i've learned through this process uh was when i to capture an idea like i have tons of ideas and uh, inspiration seems, seems to be everywhere uh, and I used to just write them down in, uh, you know, on a piece of paper or in a journal, and and then they would just stay in there and die <laughs> and never turn into anything. Um, and so one thing I did this year that's been surprisingly helpful is when I have an idea, I, I have the Canva app okay, on my yeah, phone yeah. Yeah. and uh, and on my iPad, <clears throat> which are the two devices I use the most. And um, instead of putting the idea in a journaling app or, or writing it down, I put it, I just make a new file in Canva, write out uh, the text quickly for the idea and be as brief and direct as possible. And then <clears throat> either right then or soon thereafter, I go into uh, go into the elements. You know, there's a lot of elements mm -hmm. you can just search for and add right inside of Canva. And I'll and so I'll just search on that topic and try to generate a bunch of ideas. And I'll drag a bunch of uh, elements onto the canvas as well. Nice. And I'll either I, I'm sometimes I use those elements straight from Canva. Uh, normally, uh, uh, typically, I actually I I have to. Uh, do have to modify them or, or do my own version just because uh, I, don't, I don't, I'm finicky, I guess. <laughs> and I want it to be the way I want it to be. So I kind of spend some more time polishing it. Um, but that, that one thing alone has really helped me to go from idea to execution a lot faster than I, than I ever have before. And, yeah. uh, and it's, even just now describing it, it, it doesn't sound that amazing, but somehow it really makes the difference. That's cool. I like that. That's a great tip because I, I did kind of the same thing. I, I used Canva uh, for one of my Shirttober things and it was just always Canva. And it just, it's so easy to kind of brainstorm and leave it there instead of on a piece of paper where it's, you yeah. know, it's not, it's kind of an idea, but this is kind of a more baked idea. And so yeah. whenever you go to Canva, you can see like, oh, this is kind of the idea with graphics, with elements. Yeah. And so it's really helpful. Kind of gets you that next step. Over yeah. Which, somehow it just gets me over that hump. Like I've uh -huh. already done a little bit of. Yeah. You're halfway there. Research, a little yeah. bit of thinking on the idea. Yeah. And put some images to the idea already. Uh -huh. And, um, and then and then i can go and come back like this shirt yeah. i'm wearing right here actually okay this little guy let me zoom in here uh-huh he's uh he's a he was born in canva so, <laughs> and then and then typically in my process i end up exporting a pdf from canva bringing it over to um affinity designer on my oh, nice i'm looking over here because i have another desk over here for with your other is, stuff with my work desk and then i go over to my to my play desk to make <laughs> shirts. Uh, yeah. nice. Uh, nice. So my iPad, so then I bring uh, stuff out of Canva into Affinity on my iPad. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I like that. Um, so we, yeah, we both use Canva, both use Affinity Designer. It's awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, third question, kind of, I like the second question, but the other side of it, what are some things you're still struggling with um, this year uh, okay. with print on demand? Yeah. Yeah. So I think the, uh, so the, the one thing I mentioned consistency, that yeah. is still the thing I struggle with. I think that's the biggest thing for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I have a day job mm -hmm. and, um, and, and family. I'm done. And, I'm yeah. <laughs> tired. And, yeah. uh, 
it's hard to reorient and dive back into more work. And so, and I try not to make it a second job. I, I don't need a second job. Mm -hmm. Like going back to earlier, like I started this as a creative outlet mm -hmm. and, and that's at the moment, that's my first priority. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then secondarily is providing, you know, passive income, thing like mm -hmm. that. So, um, I, I, not that I would, I wouldn't mind making a lot more passive income. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's one thing I've learned for sure is passive income. I, I'm, it's not so passive <laughs> yet. I haven't, yeah. uh, and, and that's, I guess that goes back to my, to the, in, the inspiration I get from you actually is mm -hmm. you've been at this for at least a decade. Mm -hmm. And I see how you've grown it and how you're really finding a lot of success. Mm -hmm. And and I actually use that to remind me like, hey, Tom, you're in year one. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see Juna like success just yet. But right. if you keep keep trying, keep putting in the work, you're going to you're going to find your way. That's so I'm, I'm holding on to that hope. Fingers, fingers crossed. So. Cool. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I think that's a consistency. I, yeah, I understand that. That's a that's a tough one, especially with limited time with a nine to five and family and like balancing everything. So, um, but you're right. Like you know, over time, I, I bet you look back next year and look back, you know, a year ago and see you can see kind of the growth, right? And I I think year over year that happens too. So you look back from year five and look back to year one, you'll see it even massive growth. So yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah. Um, that's really been my constant reminder this year. It's mm -hmm. like, it's, it's okay. You know, it's you, a long marathon. It definitely is. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Exactly. It's, yeah. this isn't a sprint. So. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. One of the things I wanted to ask you um, and see if this affects you at all. Uh, I know AI uh, has been a big thing this year. So my fourth question is, has AI affected your print on demand business? And uh, do you or would you use AI in your print on demand business? I love this question, actually. Oh, good. Good. Um, because it is such a hot topic. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I actually have a neighbor who lives just down the street who is an illustrator uh, by profession. Uh, and, and, and so I really, uh, earlier this year, as this topic started heating up, I, I had a chance to have a conversation with him and and he expressed the concerns that you would imagine that, mm -hmm. you know, this is, this is taking away my ability to provide for my family. Right. Mm -hmm. or, or it's going to, right. Um, other things I've heard from other illustrators in, in the business are like, like, you know, this, AI is really cool, but why don't we, why don't we teach it to do the things we don't want to do <laughs> instead of teaching it to do the stuff we do want to do? <laughs> um, so I, I, you know, obviously that's an artist's perspective, right? And there's uh -huh. a lot of people that really don't want to paint or draw, but yeah. um, so they, they have a different perspective, but I, I really appreciate that perspective. It's, um, it's definitely something to be concerned about. Plus, along with um, the the, uh, it hasn't been determined yet in the courts, but there's mm -hmm. obviously questions about you know the content that this stuff's been trained on, and and has is that violate copyright? Is that a kind of stealing from you know from these people and and their work? Again, eating away at their at their income. So there's some legitimate questions I have around it. Um, me personally, though, I do see it as a as a tool, mm -hmm. just like uh, the tools we just mentioned: Affinity Designer, Canva, mm -hmm. um, even the internet itself. Right? Mm -hmm. If you take away generative AI and just go online and do an image search. People can go, people can and do go online and steal people's artwork and use it without permission. That happens mm -hmm. 
today. <laughs> um, so that, so in that regard, it's, it's not totally new. Um, but it's, it's something that, that I think is, it's a tool just like the internet and an image search and people can use it in, you know, be respectful of other people's work or they can abuse it. So I, I, my, my hope is that we find good ways to use AI. For me personally, um, I just, I, like I said about the, the Canva artwork, for example. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like designing t-shirts. I like making it just the way I want it to be. Mm. I probably spend too long polishing some designs, <laughs> but there you go. But that's the part I, that really fills my bucket. And, and again, that's the creative outlet. That's why I started doing this. Mm -hmm. So farming that out to a computer to create it, it isn't something that thrills me. Like mm -hmm. if I could use AI to automatically post on Instagram and, and to handle all that side of the stuff that I'm not very good at and I don't like doing as much, mm -hmm. that would be fantastic. I, that's, mm -hmm. I'd love, I'd jump at uh you know quote unquote outsourcing some of that stuff to to mm -hmm. ai uh, the other side of that too is that um and maybe i'm not a, a generative ai expert yet <laughs> but <clears throat> i haven't found an ai image generator that makes an image that i want the way mm. i want it anyways mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and maybe I need to learn from you. Maybe you've got, maybe I need to watch some more of your videos. Maybe you've got some, <laughs> some, I've seen some of your AI videos, uh, and, uh, and they, and it's, it's, it's nice, but like, I don't know. It's like, I'm going to have to, I haven't seen you something can. that will produce it yeah. exactly the way or close to what I would want to start with. Mm -hmm. And so it just seems like a better use of my time to make it myself at this mm -hmm. point. Maybe I'm wrong, but. No, I think you're right. I think uh, it's uh, to me when I think about it, it's kind of like clip art, right? Like you go to the even when before AI, we used to go to like stock yeah. clip art kind of places. And when you go on there, you look, you look, you look and like it's kind of like I want, but not exactly. What exactly. Want, right. It's yeah. kind of the same thing, except now we're getting it in seconds and, and with a prompt, yeah. and whatever. But it's kind of the same deal to me. So exactly. Yeah. I, I see it exactly the same. I, you mm -hmm. know, it's a little bit different, but. Yeah, it's mostly it's kind of like the same thing. So that's the fun part to me. Mm -hmm. I want to do that myself, at least for now, right? I yeah, absolutely. And I think to answer your or not answer your question, but to go along with what you were saying, I think AI is coming to do some of those other stuff too. You know, probably po posting <laughs> posting online to social media. Hopefully, uh, I I hope it can write, and I think it can if you train it enough to write your titles and tags and and descriptions and all of that stuff, which I don't necessarily like doing either. So, um, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I think AI is going to touch a lot of different parts of, of print on demand, not just the not just the picture part, which is, is getting a lot of press now and getting a lot of, because it's really cool that it can do that. But you know, yeah. Chat GPT and a lot of the text stuff that it can write and and do it, it's pretty powerful that way. Too. Yeah, it's totally crazy what mm -hmm. it can do. Um, you introduced me to Leonardo AI. Yes. Uh -huh. and and I, I tried out Mid Journey and Dolly, but Leonardo just felt so much more polished than, mm -hmm. than those other tools. It, and granted, I didn't invest um, time heavily in any of them, so I'm not really an expert, but I've kind of just settled on Leonardo as the one that I experiment with for now because... Nice. That one just seems to produce the most polished results. Yeah, and it's getting they're getting better and better every time. Like every every week or two, I see a new update from Leonardo or some other AI. I was like, we added this, we added this. Um, so that's great. Um, I'm gonna ask you another question. I'm I'm sorry we didn't touch on this yet, but tell us more about your your favorite print on demand sites. Which ones do you use? Um, what do you have the most success with? And what are kind of your likes and dislikes of? any any of the ones that you use so. yes i should have mentioned this before so cotton bureau has become my go-to okay um so and, and i wasn't even 
on Cotton Bureau at the beginning of this year. So like I mentioned earlier, I started with Redbubble. That one, mm -hmm. um, I because of time I'd spent with you, I think I had created accounts on a lot of places, Threadless, mm -hmm. uh, T Public, Cafe Press, and, and Redbubble. And I felt it felt too, I felt like I was stretched too thin <laughs> trying to feed all of these machines, my, <laughs> my designs. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I was just like, okay, I'm doing Redbubble. I, I, I liked, it felt the easiest to use for me. <laughs> um, and so that I made that one, my, my focus and I, poured all of all the artwork, all the designs I was creating, I was, I poured in there. And then I was posting, I, I also created an Instagram uh, account separate from my, from my personal Instagram account. Um, the one that you're showing on the screen is my, is my more public or t-shirt design uh, mm -hmm. Instagram account. And, and I, so I was feeding Redbubble and feeding Instagram my designs. And I was getting a little i got a few sales on redbubble for for all this initial initial effort and and again it was fine i was like oh, that's fine i'm i'm having a good time so whatever um and, and then there's a friend of mine uh tiffany who is a typographer uh and designer um she we've been acquainted for many years and she uh, comment. She saw one of my designs, uh, one of my first designs on uh, Instagram, and she was like, "This should be on Cotton Bureau. You should post this on Cotton Bureau." And I had heard of Cotton Bureau, but I, somehow I had decided that I didn't make the cut for Cotton Bureau. And mm -hmm. I was like, uh, "I'd never bothered going back there and and seeing if I could." Um, if I could sell products there. And, um, but with her, like she was so enthused, I was just like, okay. Uh, so I went and uploaded it and, and it got accepted within a day. Um, and the way Cotton Bureau works is they, they review your first design, like that, that gets scrutiny. And I don't, that's kind of a black box. I don't know, you know, if they look me up online and look at other work, I, I have no idea, but they approved it. They're like, yep, you're good. Um, I was like, no way. I made the cut. <laughs> um, and, and, and Cotton Bureau has been great. Like um, there, I've had a couple interactions with customer support, not, not because I had big problems. I think I more had questions about, I was things I was saying, I didn't understand what was, what was happening. And they're like, I got to I enjoy interacting with their customer support that I, that, and uh, which I think is a, is a great testament to their organization. Like, it's just like, like you, I I've joked around in them in the support emails and they joke back. Like, it's just so it's like the best <laughs> customer support experience. Um, and I really like the design of the site and they really have a, they've cultivated a great audience, a great community, a great culture. And, um, so I feel like my designs connect well with that audience. And so I've sold this year, I've sold, um, oh, five times more on wow. Cotton Bureau than I have on Redbubble. Wow. Redbubble never really, was just, this, just this trickle. Mm -hmm. and, and then earlier this year, Redbubble, um, uh, they introduced that new tier system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. And they never, they never told me where I was in the tier system. And, and this, and then I finally made enough money to get paid. That tells you like how <laughs> little I was, uh, you know, transaction. I was, I had transactions I was doing on there. I finally got enough to get paid. And so once they paid me, I just took down all my artwork. Cause I was like, I, I don't know what's going to happen if they're going to put me in some bucket. Right, making so little on there already. Are they going to drop me in a bucket that's just going to wipe all of that away? So I just took, I just took all of my artwork on there, all the products on there, and I just turned them off. So my account is still there. My artwork's still all uploaded. I could go turn it back on, but financially, it was just like 
this is not worth the effort. Mm -hmm. So I actually, sorry, red bubble. I actually, <laughs> um, yeah, turned that off. So if they want to, and, and, and like I said, I'm making, I'm not making a ton of money. Uh, obviously five, obviously five times nothing is not a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making so much more on Cotton Bureau yeah. and it's a good experience there. I'm like, oh, I'll just stick with this. Good. I like that story because I, I, I tell everyone like every, everybody's different. Um, each pod site is, is different. And so you may find one, like, I, I don't talk about cotton bureau that much. And in fact, I heard it from you after you, you got on there. I, I got on there and tried it myself, yeah. but, uh, um, I, I personally have success with Amazon. Other people have success with Etsy. Other people have success yeah. with Redbubble. And, and it's great that you found the one that works for you. And yeah. that can, that can take some, some time, some trial and error, but you know, yeah. it's not just, you can if Redbubble is not working, there's options, right? So that, this yeah, is great. It, it is nice that there's options and, and it's really nice that I did hit with Cotton Bureau, at least a mm -hmm. little bit, because, um, I guess I should mention what, another thing that happened with Cotton Bureau was that I got featured in oh, there. Right. So they send out a weekly uh, email. I think you, I think you were the first one to see it maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, on Tuesdays, they got their t-shirt Tuesday email they send out and then they highlight 10 designs in that email. So smart. And one of my designs got highlighted and I was like, what? um, and obviously that drove sales. Right. Mm -hmm. And and I think since then, I've had at least four or five more of my designs highlighted this year wow. in that email. Wow. Um, so that's been a huge boon. And it's really kind of, it really boosted my confidence that this was, that this was a great marketplace for me, a good fit for me. And that my artwork was connecting not only with the admins of the marketplace, but people were buying it too. Mm -hmm. so, so even though I said it's not so much about the money, um, the it's so cool that people like my designs enough mm -hmm. to put down money on them. That's yeah. that's so cool to me, and um, and it does definitely. Uh, I don't know, strokes the ego or, or mm -hmm. what, but it just, it makes me feel like, oh, you know, I'll keep, I'll keep, this is, it's a fun component. I, I would design t-shirts anyways. I like to tell myself I would do that anyways. Mm -hmm. um, but that feedback and connecting with people, I, I, I really enjoy that part of it too. Yeah. So I want, I want more of that. Yeah. And I think it goes along with our, our job as UX designers, right? We, we love the feedback. We like to get yeah, that and it sure. helps us kind of make good decisions. So if we get yeah. feedback, like people love, love this design, maybe I can make something more along this, this thing. Yep. Right. So, yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, speaking of that, uh, my next question is where do you go for inspiration? How do you get inspired on to what to do, what topics to do, what styles to do? Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Um, so, so my work is at the, uh, where I like to, to hang out, uh, -huh. uh, conceptually is the, is at the intersection of faith and humor and good design, which is, I, I'm not totally unique in that regard. Um, but I, I've got my own sense of humor. Mm -hmm. and uh my own sense of design and uh i like the to connect those with my faith and so um so some of it that that my the name of my uh of my design my design handle my t-shirt design handle small and simple things mm -hmm. um <clears throat> that's been my url for 15 years for a wow. while wow. <clears throat> and uh and and that's inspired by a, a scripture that you know that says you know god works through these little things right so that's what it's really that is what inspires me is oh, cool. looking for those little connections 
So you, if you look at some of my t-shirt designs um, on Cotton Bureau, like, or um, one of the big sellers is a, is a sloth, you know, it's hanging from a tree and it says slow down under it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think that's so funny, but <laughs> uh, apparently other people enjoy it too. So, yeah. I, and then in the description, I put some, I dropped in some words just to, uh, you know, like tags. They don't do tags on Cotton Bureau, but I just put words in there to kind of help it be findable in their search. Um, and then I put a scripture in there that, uh, from the Old Testament that says the race is not to the swift, right? Oh, nice. Yeah. And that's just, and that adds to the humor to me, right? Like you don't, I don't, I just don't, it's just fun to connect visually with that, that picture of yeah. a sloth hanging on a tree with that scripture, right? Yeah. You're that's, telling a story. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's like a little tongue in cheek humor. Uh, -huh. uh, it's kind of my sense of humor and. So I think those are the kinds of things that I get inspired by kind of finding those little quirky connections where that you may not typically uh, associate with those disparate things. Cool. Cool. I like it. Uh, so moving on from inspiration now to motivation, I think you might've mm. touched on this a little bit, but what keeps you motivated to, you, you talked about consistency and doing it. Yeah. Um, what are some things that help keep you motivated to continue to do these things? Oh, that's so good. Um, I think one thing is wanting that wanting to connect with people through the, through the designs and the concepts that, that, I'm sharing through them. Uh, um, something else I really want to do. I've I've had the chance to do quite a bit of mentoring in mm -hmm. my career of younger designers, mm -hmm. and to be honest, I love that. I love um, helping people find their way in this career field because I've found a lot of joy and satisfaction in design. Mm -hmm. I started in graphic design, started with t-shirts and, and I've done trade show booths. I've done collateral materials. I've done advertising, marketing. I, I've, I've designed my own fonts and, and nice. built them. Like I haven't done everything. I haven't done a lot of video or animation or motion graphic. I haven't gotten into that, um, but I've done a lot of things and I've loved it. I, I love this career. I love creating and, and solving visual problems and um, communicating visually. And, and I love seeing others find that joy in doing this too. And so in terms of motivation, I hope I can get to a point. I'm not, I don't think I'm there yet, but I would love to get to a point where I can actually somehow, I don't know, pro somehow provide um, opportunities for up and coming artists and designers to get a foothold and to get, have a piece of the fun that, mm -hmm. uh, that I've been enjoying. Cool. Yeah. I like that. I, in fact, that's, that's what motivates me too. So the, that's the whole yeah. reason for this channel is to, yeah, yeah. to help other people and, 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 help them see that you can do these things and, and there's yep. lots of ways to do it. So, yeah, I would cool. say to your audience, if you get a chance to work with Juna, take it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And same. I, I love working with you, Tom, too. So. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, let's see. Two more questions. Um, Q4 typically is a big, big uh, time of year for print on demand, any business really, but especially for print on demand. Um, what do you have planned for Q4? Any anything you're gonna do different for Q4 um, for print on demand? So two things. Um, <clears throat> one is is more practical. Mm -hmm. I, I want to dip my toe into advertising. Oh, nice! Something I have not done. I've bootstrapped everything that I've done so far this year. Um, anything I can get for free, I will. So Instagram, you know, mm -hmm. Facebook, what have you. Um, so that's, but advertising, I think 
um, this, and this is probably where I could learn, I need to watch more of your videos. <laughs> um, but I suspect that if I can drive, if I can find, if I can connect with the, the market and, and help people discover, uh, my artwork that connects with them, um, I think I'll, I think I'll see a, a, a real uptick. So that's one thing. Okay. Advertising. Nice. Uh, another, the other one I want to do is actually collaboration. Um, and again, that goes back to the, what we were just talking about with, uh, mentoring. Mm -hmm. I, there's an, there's an artist I know that she is really talented mm -hmm. and, uh, and she is just getting started in studying art in college. And um, it also just so happens that she's my daughter. <laughs> and, just so uh, happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm hoping to, uh, she's got some talents uh, already that I don't have. So it, I think it'd be fun to collaborate on a, on a design That's and fun. see what kind of energy that brings to the work. That's cool. I would, that, that's a great one. In fact, if you post that on Instagram, I think you get a lot of, a lot of people yeah. interested in that too, that kind of collaboration father daughter thing that that's really cool. Yeah. All right. He's, if I can, I think if I can help her, if I can be a good mentor and help her to kind of get those first steps and uh -huh. progress, um, that would teach me how I could help other people too. That's perfect. Yeah. Well, my last question, um, not surprisingly, but it, it matches kind of what you're saying here. So I'm going to ask you this. What's your advice for those just starting out with print on demand? Oh, uh, do it if you love it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that kind of, I think that sums up well, kind of some of the things that we've touched on. Mm -hmm. um, if, if it's, if it's not, don't don't try to fit yourself into a mold um either in uh, how you do the work or what your work looks like um to, uh, quite the opposite i would say get really clear with it with yourself about what it is you you're all about that's actually been a big part of my journey this year mm -hmm. is defining and redefining who I am and what my work is and what it means and what, what my story is. Uh, that's actually some of the work I've been doing over the last month, um, is, uh, actually a lot, a little bit of personal writing, uh, a little bit of introspection and writing to capture better. Who's my audience? What do I have to offer? Um, and get really clear with that. And I, I think, for me, doing the work has helped me to kind of uh, open my eyes some more to to the next levels and to what I need to do next and and how I need to position myself. Um, and so I, I I think that that the doing of the work is a great way to start. Just just jump in and, and have fun. Um, but but also taking some time to to self to reflect and and get a little bit clearer about about who my audience is and who I am and and how we can connect um that's been been that's been enjoyable work to do as well and and I really see the value in it and um I don't I don't know if that I hope that makes sense it's a little bit it's not no it makes it's not about sense. tools or uh yeah. <laughs> or design no. or 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 print on demand but it, mm -hmm. but I think that really that's going to help anybody to kind of find their groove and really um accelerate yeah I'm glad you shared that because I think a lot of people see print on demand as you know, a way to make money and it is, but uh, if that's all you're in it for, yeah. you may burn out before you make any money, right? <laughs> you may, yes. you may not um, do that. So it, it really helps to have that mindset, like you're saying is, and I, I've seen it too. And, and that's why I think um, I, that's why I think uh, I'm doing so well with it is because it didn't matter. The money at first didn't matter because I, yeah. I just love doing it. 
I yeah. love helping people, like you said. I love um, creating designs. And so all of that in the beginning just kind of helped. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think that's something that's overlooked. And I'm so glad you mentioned that because a lot of people in in my groups and, and su subscribers and, and things yeah. like that, they they like they have a hard time with it. And that's because they're they're in it. Uh, most most of them that have the hard time is they're just trying to hit the money goal boom 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 yeah but they're not talking they're not thinking about how am i as a person can give value how can i give value to everybody else and yeah what, what how am i different how am i you know instead of copying yeah. copying copying like what's my thing that right. I do well yeah well and it's so ironic because yeah. you and i and every other designer out there <laughs> we, we spend all of our time developing other people's you know <laughs> products and identity and look and feel and it's like <laughs> and then uh, i i don't uh, you know i've just missed the opportunity to do that until now and so really mm -hmm. that's been over the past couple of weeks to be honest i've done mm -hmm. you know just another round of reflection went on did a search on you know how do you how do you define a brand Right. Yeah. And I just found some great questions and then I answer those questions for myself. And it's surprising to find sometimes like, I don't really know the answer to that question or mm -hmm. I, I have an answer, but I don't really like the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's a great exercise yeah. and, um, and it really is helping me to look inward so i can look out and find and do even better be even better mm -hmm. than i have been that's awesome that's a great way to end it so that's my last question um love it um before we uh sign off here i want to tell people uh, how to find you or you can tell us where to find you um the different places you mentioned cotton bureau i know you have a website and so let's name all of them uh and and where can people okay. find you and your stuff? Yeah. So the easy one is Instagram right there. Oh, on the bottom. Yeah. I did yep. that. And and don't forget the underscore at the end. So, right. Uh, sorry for for I've had that domain for years, but for some reason that handle is taken on Instagram and not by me. So I have to add the little underscore on there at the end. But mm -hmm. that's a great way to find me. I I've there's quite a bit of my uh, uh, designs from Cotton Deer are up there. Cool. Um and then and then if you just uh, the url if you obviously if you drop off that underscore and put in that url that will bring you to my website cool um and then um from my website you, it links to my cotton bureau shop okay. it links to uh dribble i've got i've been on dribble for a few years and i post a little bit there not a whole lot tell, tell us more about dribble just a little bit because I, I don't know if my followers they a lot of them aren't designers so they may not know what dribble is okay so dribble is social media for designers and illustrators and others that work in the commercial creative industries okay um you post shots um they're called shots you post shots and uh and your fellow creatives can comment on them and they can post rebounds so they can link to your shot and post their own design nice. That's uh, so fun. it's a great community i really and the quality of work there is stellar so it's and it's good, a, good inspiration too i'm sure there's yes. a lot of good yes. inspiration there and can make a exactly. lot of friends and things cool all right so, so we got there that. might be another there might be a link to something else on my site yeah. but i think i saw a github um, oh yeah. There. Yeah. 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 So I nerd out a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I, I mentioned that I've had this domain for 10 or 15 years and, um, and right now that all that code is on GitHub actually nice. in a Jekyll site and it, it, uh, um, and then I just point my domain there. So if you want to get nerdy, <laughs> follow me on GitHub. Cool. <laughs> Very cool. And uh, I think you mentioned to me um, that you can get a, a discount or something on your, on your, is it on your shirts or on your, yes. how does that work? Thank you. So if you go to my site uh -huh. and then down at the bottom, it says, join my newsletter. And if you join, you will get an email with a 20% off discount wow. for my Cotton Bureau shop. Nice. So... Nice. 
yes, go and go and sign up. Uh, I love again, like I said, I love to connect with people, and so I love to connect through email actually because. Uh, Instagram's hard. Uh, it's yes. hard to get found and and seen there. So uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll get over that hump someday. But uh, email is a great way to connect with me. And joining my email list will get you a twenty percent discount. There's also there's also another secret discount code in there as well. Oh, really? so, okay. Well, they're gonna have to go look. Go to Tom's shop, Small and Simple Things, and dot org, right? And yep. go look for that that secret secret sauce. Yes. Yes. Please sign up. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much, Tom. I have no doubt that you're going to be doing well in the next year. We might have to do another interview a year from now and just see how, how well you've grown. You're so smart on, on doing these things. And it's so nice of you to share your, your journey with us uh, at this early stage. And yeah, sure it's going to just keep getting better and better. Yeah, so. Let's do it. Thank you, Gina, for what you're doing. These Your video series uh, is fantastic. And I'm sure you're inspiring many and helping them succeed so well done thank you thanks so much uh, i love doing it just like you we love helping out people so until next time todd I, I'll, I'll probably see you at work but, yeah uh, <laughs> see you soon <laughs> see you soon all right bye, bye.